Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Real Talk. We are back on a Wednesday this time, and uh, I'm I'm back. I'm Jeff and Brad. How are you, sir? I'm well, man. How's it going? I am. Uh, I'm good. I'm good. I'm ready to talk some football. You know, we uh, sure. we're coming up. We're coming up a day late, and it was kind of uh, it was kind of cool to have a couple people reach out and be like, "Hey, where's this Power Rings episode at?" I thought we were beefing over some some rivalry stuff <laughs> on the on the Facebook page. Gosh, me, me and Brad bicker over uh, who's the, got the best rivalry in the NFL, and you guys all thought we were canceling the pod. So, uh, outside of that, man, I'm, uh, you know, this this NFL season is is flying by. We're we're going into week eleven, and I have a I have a power rankings list here, and uh, you know, I I like how I lined them up, but I don't I don't love it. It's definitely arguable, and I'm sure yours probably is too. Yeah, but, I'm sure uh, people people have some. Some flip flops, but I think for the most part they won't be shocked at some of the teams we throw out. Maybe some of the teams we leave out, though. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, I mean, let me just start off with who who I left off before I even get into this list. Um, some really good teams. Some really, really good teams. Uh, the Browns at six and three left them off. The in, I'm sorry, not the Indianapolis Colts. The uh, the Raiders who have played very well as of late, uh, six and three. I left them off. The Seattle Seahawks. Who started this league five and five and zero oh, have dropped one of the last or they've won one of the last four games. Um, I left them off, and the Tennessee Titans, who I think both of us has had as high as maybe even three, I left them off. So let me go ahead and just start off. Coming in at number eleven, the Indianapolis Colts. They're six and three. They uh, they're plus sixty five on the year. They just recently beat the the Titans on on Thursday night by two scores. Uh, you know I've been on and off about this team. I think you've probably been. Um, more of a, a liker of this team than I have, but it seems like they're pretty complete and they might just be an elite quarterback away from being like the best team in the league. But with, with what they have, they're, they're good. They're a yes. good football team. Uh, they, they use a multiple backs. They, they're not in love with any one running back and they don't really have any dominant receivers, but they do enough with just about everybody. It really reminds me of a talented Chargers team over the last several years. They just have a lot of good pieces, not anybody super elite or anything like that. But they do have a massive matchup this week against the Packers. And uh, I think we'll find out more uh, of what this team's about. But they're at home, and uh, they've played pretty well there this year. Coming in at number 10, the L.A. Rams at 6-3. and three. They're plus 48 on the year. They're one of three teams in the league that's perfect at home. Them, the Seahawks, and obviously the Pittsburgh Steelers, who are undefeated. Uh, they have a massive matchup this week with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. It's going to be on Monday Night Football. I think we're going to find out a lot about both teams, and I'll, I'll allude to a certain statistic here in a minute, but I think the Rams have a pretty good shot at maybe picking up the win there. Uh, coming in at number nine, this is the lowest they've been on this list all year. I still like this team. But uh, I'm not going to reward them after losing on Sunday night. It's the Baltimore Ravens. They're six and three. Uh, I mean, this team's as good as anybody. They're plus 79 on the year. You know, I've I've said it uh, multiple times that they're the best running team in the league, and I still stand by that. But in a uh, in a game at New England when it was pouring down rain, in which the running game would have been uh, ideal, they didn't run it all that effectively, and they they, they had a lot of mental mistakes, and it cost them. It cost them the game. They do play at Tennessee this weekend. And obviously that would be a rematch of the AFC divisional round. I like the Titans to upset them as of right now. But we'll see how that goes. The Ravens deserve to be in over the Titans in my power rankings. But I I could see the Titans beating the Ravens. And I might drop the, the Ravens next week. We'll see. Coming at number eight, I think this might be the highest they've been. I don't know. The Miami Dolphins. They're six and three. They're plus sixty nine on the year, which is it's really fantastic for a three loss team. Uh, they're three and zero oh with with Tua at the helm. I mean, they're they're scoring defensive touchdowns like crazy, but Tua's definitely uh, definitely coasting them to victories. They have a uh, a very easy winnable game this weekend uh, at Denver, and it sounds like Drew Locke's not even going to play. So we'll see. I think uh, I think Miami's going to keep rolling, get to seven and four. Coming in at number seven, uh, this team probably had the most unfortunate loss of the weekend, the Buffalo Bills at seven and three. Uh, they're plus seven on the year, which is by far the worst of any team that's got seven wins. But 
they lost on a Hail Mary to the best receiver in football. I'm I'm not going to beat them up too bad. They had the game won. Uh, you know, if, if, if Joe Schmo caught it, I might beat him up, but literally the best receiver in football makes a unbelievable play and drops the Bills. They have a bye this week, so they have some time to uh, reset and get ready for, uh, you know, their, their, next, their next matchup in Week 12. Coming at number six, it's the team that beat them, the Arizona Cardinals. This is probably the highest they've been on my list, 6-3, uh, plus 56 on the year. Kyler's been unreal. I mean, we've talked about him a lot. He's 17 touchdowns, eight picks. He's also got 10 rushing touchdowns, so 27 total touchdowns is just it's it's really staggering. out of this, It's really out of this world. I mean, we're literally we're just over the halfway point, just over. He's on pace for 30 some odd touchdowns and 15 rushing touchdowns. It's just, uh, I mean, can you imagine 50 total touchdowns in in the NFL and today? I mean, it's been done like three times. Three times in a second-year quarterback. I mean, who knows? Uh, coming in at number, oh, I'm sorry, they play. They play this Thursday night at Seattle. Obviously, they beat Seattle this year in Glendale. Uh, Metcalf be a Metcalf chase down. Yep, with the Metcalf chase down. That was one of the more exciting games of the entire year. It's definitely a top three game that's happened so far this year. I expect this one to be fireworks too. Coming in at number five, it's the Green Bay Packers. Uh, they're seven and two on the year. Plus 53. They did struggle with Jacksonville this week. Uh, I, I didn't, I didn't, I wasn't too hard on them. You know, this team, uh, they win a lot of games. They've lost a couple, but they win a lot of games too. Rodgers on the year has been nothing short but incredible. 26 touchdowns, three picks. He's, he's number one in passer rating at 116, which is weird, but it's like his career average. So, I mean, it's not even like an above average season for him. He's, I think he's a career average is like 114 or passer rating. So he's slightly above it. They have a massive matchup at the Colts this Sunday. Coming in at number four, uh, you know, I'm I'm not going to beat this team up over some Saints losses. It's the Tampa Bay Bucks. They're 7-3, and three, plus 70 on the year. This is the biggest statistic I found. You know, I, I dropped a statistic last week, but uh, truly this is an even better one. They're 5-1 and one in games played before 8 o'clock at night. And you're like, well, you know, what what is it about the prime time? Uh, they're two and two in prime time. And from everything I hear, Tom Brady on a normal day goes to bed before nine o'clock at night. Uh, it might be one of those things where he's coming out sluggish in prime time games. Obviously, the Super Bowl is prayed at prime time, and there's a lot of prime time games left. But for them, they're going to play of their last five games. None of them are in prime time. They do have a Monday night football game coming up this week, but after that, it's all one o'clock and one four o'clock. So they, their schedule fits up very nicely to what they're they're playing really well in. So watch out for the Tampa Bay Bucks coming in at number three. This is probably the highest this team's ever going to get on this list because I, I see them dropping. But it's the New Orleans Saints. As of right now, they're the third best team. I don't know that it stays that way. They just lost Drew Brees, Drew, yeah, Drew Brees for a few weeks. They're plus fifty eight on the year. Kamara has been incredible. He's been as good as any player in the NFL this year. 1,100 total yards and 11 touchdowns. Um, they do play the Falcons, who have gotten quietly hot. We'll see what uh, Jameis Winston brings, and we'll see what um, Hill. Hill, right? Taysom. Yeah, Taysom, Taysom Hill. Hill. Thank you. Wow, I couldn't think of his first name. Taysom Hill are able to combine four, and if they can beat the Falcons and keep moving. Obviously, they, they had Bridgewater last year. And that was, it, it was flawless, 5-0 and with, with Bridgewater. We'll see if Jameis can provide that same spark. But as of right now, they're my third best team. Coming in at number two, and I almost put them back at number one, but I left him at two. It's the Pittsburgh Steelers. They're 9-0, and uh, plus 100 on the year. Big Ben's been, people aren't talking about Big Ben enough because there's a lot of quarterbacks having good seasons. He's 22 touchdowns and only four picks, and I believe three of them came in one game, right? Yeah. In a game they won. So, uh, and you know, somebody they are talking about is, uh, in my opinion, the rookie of the year right now at this point. It's, it's Chase Claypool at nine total touchdowns. They have a very winnable game this week against the Jags. Um, the only reason I have this team at two is if they played Kansas City today, I would pick Kansas City to win. That's the only reason. That's strictly the only reason. Um, I like what Kansas City is able to do. Uh, and I think they would match up all right with Pittsburgh and probably pick up the W in a, in a close one. But... Number one, it's Kansas City. They're eight and one. They're 
Their only loss was to the team they're playing this Sunday, uh, Sunday Night Football. It's against the Raiders. They're at, at Las Vegas this weekend, plus 103. God, I mean, Patrick Mahomes has been incredible. He has one pick on the year. I, I don't have too much to say except the fact that they have one loss since last November. You know, Pittsburgh hasn't lost this year, but Kansas City has lost once in the last 365 days. So uh, they're the best team in football, in my opinion. So that wraps it up. All right. Um, you alluded to a ton of things. Normally I go second. I'll just keep it short and sweet. Um, you guys will see that <clears throat> Jeff and I both did top 11s this week. Yep. And sequently – we only have two teams different, and we have them swapped in spots. So our lists are pretty much the exact same. Um, <laughs> number 11, I have the Colts. Um, and it's because I couldn't decide to put them at 10 over the Rams. I ended up going Colts at 11. Um, however, they have a huge matchup against the Packers. Um, as I alluded to last week before they played the Titans, the Colts play the Titans, Packers, Titans, and the Titans play the Colts the Ravens, the Colts. So they both had a three-game tough stretch against each other. Um, Colts have been playing extremely well. Their defense has been absolutely amazing. And I believe Phillip Rivers, the way he's looked the last two weeks, I think he was told that if he keeps turning the ball over, Jacoby Brissett's going to be the starter. I don't think Frank Reich was uh, enjoying the turnovers. That was the main reason we've always said that they were going to lose is because of Phillip Rivers. Last two weeks, he's got the ball out extremely quick, extremely efficient. Like you alluded to, they have a plethora of running backs. They like to use them all. Nareem Hines has been a touchdown machine. And um, the Colts at number 11. Um, Right ahead of them at 10 is the L.A. Rams, uh, 6-3. and Crazy stat that McVay, in his time with the Rams, is undefeated when leading at halftime. He's the only team since he's joined the Rams to have that statistic, which means they're good at putting teams away. They don't blow games late, and I think that's really important. Um, however, four of their last six games are going to be at home. So, um, I believe they travel to the Bucks for the, the Monday night game, correct? And then the rest of their no, games. No, for- they host the Bucks. Okay. So four of their last six games are at home and, um, they're just playing really well. Plus 48. They're one of three, six and three teams in their division, but it seems like the Cardinals and Rams are going to beat the Seahawks twice. I think, I think the Seahawks, their entire roster can't match up. Um, I like the Rams there. Um, they fall the Ravens at nine. Um, they've just had a lot of injuries too. And their injuries have come in the spots where I believe they're needed the most, their best blocking tight end, their best offensive lineman, Calais Campbell and run defense. So they're having a harder time stopping the run and running the football. And what do we know about the Ravens? They like to stop the run and run the football. So uh, I'm not going to say that a game against Bill Belichick on the road in a monsoon defines them, but they are 6-3 and three, tied with the Browns for second in the division. This could be a team that if they slip up a few more games, it's crazy to think could the Ravens miss the playoffs. We'll see that in the future. But right now I still have them as a top 10 team. I think they'll be okay at number nine. Here's the difference. I have the Packers. At number eight, I dropped the Packers because I know they won. Matt, great call out with the uh, with the upset. I know it didn't end up happening, but I think most people didn't believe at all, including me, that the Jags would keep this close. But it seems any team that can play really, really physical football gives this team a problem. And when you play against these teams above the Packers, I think they would lose to every single one of them. Um, Devontae Adams is limping again. You can't really count on him to be there when he's very spectacular. But he's getting injured. Aaron Jones has missed a few games this year. Um, Aaron Rodgers is really carrying the ship there. I think their defense has a lot of questions to be asked on their front seven. I just don't think they are an elite team, but I think they're a very good team. Seven and two, maybe you could say that I'm wrong. But um, I don't think the Packers have been super convincing at all this year. Number eight, um, Buffalo Bills. They're on a bye this week. They can stew on that DeAndre Hopkins Hail Mary. But um, time out. Who's your number eight team? Packers. So number seven is the Bills. Correct. Okay, you just said eight was the Bills. Okay, I'm just making sure you didn't have two eight. Oh, sorry, sorry. You're uh, good. On my, on my paper, I have last week that I had the Bills eight. 
Oh. They've moved up to seven. So my apologies for reading that. They move up one spot from last week. Um, they're only plus seven. This team is in close games all the time. It's always fun to watch. But their defense is starting to come around the last few weeks. Tredavious White's gotten healthy. Um, their 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 run defense has been okay. They've found ways to pull away. Um, I like what the building. It's all on Josh Allen. The team goes as he goes, which is for most quarterbacks. But I like the Bills' entire roster. And when Josh Allen is on, this offense is near impossible to stop with his size and arm strength. The addition of Stephon Diggs still doing his thing. Cole Beasley, uh, they got John Brown back. And since John Brown's return from injury, this team, you know, their only loss is a Hail Mary against Kyler Murray, which, little fun fact, Kyler Murray said that's the only Hail Mary he's thrown in his football career. Never threw one in high school, never had to throw one in college. So he is 100% one for one on Hail Marys, but he's throwing to D Hot. So that's a well, nice well, let thing. me jump in there because I actually have you heard the percentage of that, that completion? Mm-mm. The the expected percentage was less than ten percent. Well, that's so if, not you, if you were to throw that ten times, One, nine of them would have been incompleted. Maybe even all of them. So it's just crazy to think. And D Hop called for it. Oh my god! Yeah, we'll, we'll yeah. get right into it. Um, from nine to six, I have the Cardinals again, right there where um, I have the Cardinals right above the Bills, as you did. They move up three spots. Um, they're six and three. They are the number one statistical offense, which, I mean, I know we kind of talk about them as good, but they are higher than the Chiefs and the Saints and the Bucks and the Steelers and all the other elite offenses, the Packers. They have the number one. They've scored over 30 points every week since week four, which is early October. Um, Their point differential is plus 56, which is really good. Their next three games, though, Seahawks, a Pats team that seems to be trajectorying up, and the Rams. So two division games and then a tough, tough out against Bilicek, who's playing a second year quarterback who hasn't seen him. So, um, and Stefan Gilmore is an interesting piece up against DeAndre Hopkins. Not many teams have that kind of corner, but they're going to get two in back to back weeks. They're going to get Stefan Gilmore and then Jalen Ramsey for DeAndre Hopkins, two of the, the best two corners in the game. So we'll see what this Cardinals offense can do. They've jumped around my top 10 all year. They've just been moving all about this week, I have them at six. At number five, I have the Miami Dolphins. And I know a lot of people can think this is crazy. And I even think it's crazy that they're in this position. We've all thought, you know, in one to two years, they're going to be good. They're just ahead of schedule. Their head coach has been decisive. They changed offensive and defensive coordinators. When they didn't like their quarterback at three and three, they moved Fitzpatrick out, put in two. We're all like, it's too soon. He's three and oh. Now two is getting into kind of the cake of the schedule. They, they're six and three, and their next three are Broncos, Jets, Bengals. I anticipate the Dolphins being nine and three. And with that being said, the Bills, after their bye, play the Chargers and the 49ers, who are decimated the rest of the year in injury. I believe the Bills and Dolphins will both be nine and three in a couple weeks. So they're both, I think, are going to sit around the middle of our top top list here. And um, we alluded to this a little bit before the podcast. I like what the Patriots are doing. Um, We'll see if they can maybe keep this door open. Uh, Just kind of get into them because I know they're your favorite team. They're important to the podcast. Um, Just I wonder if this win streak might come too late because I anticipate, like I said, the Dolphins and Bills both being nine and three. But with seven teams in the playoffs, there's always that chance you can be third in your division and still make it. Now to the top four. I don't think anybody else has this different on earth. You might have them in different orders, but these are the top teams. The Buccaneers, they're seven and three. Plus 70 is the fourth best point differential in the league. They're the only team to have three wins by 20 or more points. So when they're firing on all cylinders, they are unstoppable. They just blow out teams. Um, they're seven and one against everyone not named the Saints. So, I mean, even your two and two in prime time, two, the, both those losses were to the Saints. If it's not the Saints, they're two and oh in prime time. So the Buccaneers just have a kryptonite and it's the Saints. We'll see what the Saints can do. Uh, We'll go right into them. Oh, actually, the Buccaneers have two tough games up, Rams and then the Chiefs. So it's not easy for the Bucs, especially when they know they've lost two to the Saints, who kind of have a little bit of a cupcake here. We can talk about how Drew Brees is out, but Jameis Winston adds a new element in his ability to push the ball down the field. And if he turns the ball over, I don't think they're scared to bench him for Taysom Hill. 
But Falcons, Broncos, Falcons. Broncos are not a good football team, and Drew Locke loves to turn the ball over. And the Falcons, they may be sneaky hot, but they still are a bad defense. And Jameis has seen the Falcons his entire career, coming from in division. So I think he's actually, he doesn't have to play against Tulio and Matt Ryan. He's playing against the Falcons defense, which he's seen for four years. And now he's got Michael Thomas, Emmanuel Sanders, Elvin Kamara. I think the Saints are going to be just fine the next three weeks. Top two teams, you can't have any different. It's the Chiefs and the Steelers. I have the Steelers at one. Um, Their next three games, Jaguars, Ravens, Washington. Like I said, the Ravens are getting kind of beat up, and the Steelers did beat them once already. Um, The other two teams, I believe most people think the Steelers have overwhelmingly better rosters than the Jags and Washington. Um, These two teams, the Chiefs, they play the Raiders, Bucks, Broncos, have a little bit more difficult of a schedule the next three weeks. But um, there's only two teams in the league with over a hundred point differential. Steelers at a hundred, Chiefs at 103. Um, there's only two teams that have double digits in their average margin of victory. Steelers at 11.1, Chiefs at 11.4. These are the two top teams in the NFL right now. Um, they just um, one has an MVP candidate, one has the comeback player of the year leading candidate, Mahomes and Big Ben. Um, the Steelers defense leads in sacks, quarterback hits, tackles for loss, quarterback pressures. I believe they have the front seven in the league. You could argue Buccaneers, but I don't think they've been as consistent as the Steelers. Um, just a few facts about the whole league here, guys, and it's getting pretty crazy. Um, nine wins with the Steelers. They're the only team. Eight wins is the Chiefs, only team. There are four teams with seven wins. Saints, Bucks, um, <clears throat> Raven, or uh, Packers, excuse me, Bills three from the NFC, one from the AFC. But what is kind of staggering is after you get through those six teams, there are nine teams in the NFL that are six and three or six and two, or um, excuse me, just six and three. I believe they've all played nine games. Yeah, there's uh, nine teams that are six and three, and six of them are in the AFC. So when you, in terms of the playoff picture, there are one, two, three, there are nine teams in the AFC with six wins or better. It's an absolute brutal slugfest. The NFC has six teams that have six or more wins. The playoffs are looking almost all but set in the NFC. Uh, that seventh place um, will obviously go to the terrible NFC East winners. Um, they just don't have a good record, but you win and you're in. It's always the rule. And you really can't complain because you never know when that'll benefit you. You could have some sneaky dark horses if the Vikings continue to go on their run. Um, the Chicago Bears, I believe, weren't they five and zero? Oh? No, they are now. Were they four they and zero? Oh? Four and four and one, and then five and one. Okay, so they were five and one. They're now five and five. They I were the know. number one seed in the NFC at one point when they were five and one. Yeah, and then they just terrible. Um, yeah. We'll see if there's a team, maybe the 49ers with all these injuries, see if Kyle Shanahan can pull something together. But outside of seeding, the NFC almost looks already set. You're going to have the Packers, Bucks, Saints, Seahawks, Cardinals, Rams, and the NFC winner. Um, I don't know if any of those teams can do so bad as to where maybe the Vikings, who look way better than the Bears right now, could potentially maybe sneak in as a seven seed. But uh, if you're in the NFC... There is it's it's a clear top half and bottom half of the NFC. When you get to the AFC, oh my, the last three weeks there's going to be so much changing in seating, and how many teams still have to play each other, and in division and uh, in conference. It's crazy to think that we only have six weeks left in the NFL. I mean, we're in week eleven. There's maybe a few teams that have a bye out of the notable teams here. The Bills are about to have theirs, and the Bucks are two weeks out, three weeks out from theirs. All these games are starting to matter, and and when the good teams play the good teams, these games are really going to start to count. Like uh, like you alluded to, some of the matchups you have uh, the Cardinals Seahawks, you have um, the Packers versus the Colts, the Rams versus the Bucks. All three of those games are this weekend. That's well, one's Thursday, but well, let me let me get let me say let me say this, and not that my list is the end all be all by any means, but of my top eight teams, six of them are on the road this week. One of them's on a bye. Who knows? I mean, this this week in the NFL is big. 
I think there's a there's a lot of big games going on. I mean, week week eleven is going to be extremely busy. And, well, the thing is too the the one team that you have is the Bucks, who are not on the road, right? Number three on your list. No, the Bucks are on the road. The they're Bucks playing, are. They're playing at the Rams. So the Rams, oh, gotcha, uh, they gotcha. come in at ten. So the one team that's at home is the New Orleans Saints. They're going to play the Falcons. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah, the rest of the teams are on the road. The, here, listen, these are all the teams on the road this week. So even if you don't like my list, the Cardinals, the Steelers, the Patriots, the Eagles, the Titans, the Dolphins, the Packers, the Chiefs, and the Rams, all those teams are on the road this week. I mean, I want to make a huge deal because a lot of these teams don't have uh, don't have fans in the stadium, but there's a lot of bad teams hosting home games this week. You never know with, with an upset. You never know. Yeah. Never know. And, you know, the Eagles, you know, we haven't talked about them and they've never made our list. Um, but if we could talk about them just for a brief moment, only because they're leading that division, they're going to be on the road at the Browns this week. The Browns really, really need a W. So the Eagles, I, I apologize for anyone listening to the podcast when I said that the Eagles could maybe go 500. First of all, I did think they were going to beat the Giants. So I'm not apologizing for that. I was just wrong. However, if I can remember this correctly, the Eagles' next five games are, you know what, I actually have it right in front of me, guys. Give me one second. I'm going to pop this up. This is, it's not good. The Eagles' next five games are Browns, Seahawks, Packers, Saints, Cardinals. The Eagles are shot fighters. The Giants could be hosting a playoff game at MetLife. The Giants be hosting a playoff game at MetLife without Saquon Barkley since week two. Their roster, I mean, they still have some tough games too, but they play the Bengals. They play the Seahawks That's Cardinals. Winnable. That's winnable. Seahawks the, Cardinals. the Bengals is a winnable game right. for them. Their last three Browns, I think that's winnable. Uh, I think the Browns are better than the Eagles and the Giants, but it's winnable. I'll give you that. Right. At the Ravens, and they end at the Cowboys. I that's mean, winnable. all these all these teams from the NFC, I mean, the Cowboys actually have the most favorable end of their schedule. Listen to this. Cowboys are one and a half teams out. And and they played the Steelers well. So their defense, I believe, is trending up. We'll see what they have at quarterback. Maybe Gilbert, you know, shocker. Vikings, that's winnable. Yeah. Washington. They play the Ravens. Mm-hmm. Bengals. 49ers. Eagles. Giants. The Cowboys have a realistic chance to finish this season. Their last one, two, seven games is three wins enough with the way the Giants and Eagles, who they have to play with three wins, especially if they beat the Giants and Eagles at their last two games. Say they steal one other game. Say they beat Washington or maybe they beat the Bengals. If they win their last two games against the Giants and Eagles, the Cowboys could end on a two-game win streak and host a game at AT&T Stadium, and likely it'll be the Bucks because the Bucks are probably going to be the best wild card team only because of the Saints. But it might even be moot if we're talking that far because whatever NFC East team wins, the Tampa Bay Bucks are going to walk into town, and it's probably going to be irrelevant anyway. But still, one of these teams yeah. got to be there. It's got to be one of them. I haven't heard a single person bring this up, so I'm going to. And this is this makes for an interesting conversation. So let's assume that this is a two way race. So let's just just for argument's sake, we're gonna assume it's between the Eagles and the Giants right now. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Just for argument's sake. So do those teams play again? Or have they played each other twice? Um let me see. This is between the Giants and the Eagles. And the Eagles, yeah. Um, no, um they split. The Eagles beat them. Remember, Carson Wentz came back down by 11 with five minutes left. Evan Ingram okay. dropped yeah, a touchdown. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. And then okay. the Giants just uh, get, kind of beat them up pretty bad. They were winning consistently the whole game last time so, they played. So for argument's sake, and I don't think this, this applies to the Eagles as much as I do believe it applies to the Giants. So if the Giants are sitting at three wins and the Eagles are sitting at three wins, okay, and it's week 17, and the Eagles would play the Cowboys, correct? Week 17? Yeah. Yep. And the, Gi- the Giants would play who? Oh, no, Eagles, Eagles play Washington. Cowboys would play the Giants. Okay. If the Giants needed a win and they're in, hypothetical, let's say the Eagles had already lost and the Giants get to play a win and they're in, 
I'm not sure they would take that opportunity because here's why. And nobody's talking about this. It's playoffs or eighth overall pick in the draft. And if they get in, do you know what their pick goes to? It's not eight anymore. It it locks in as a playoff pick. And then if they win a playoff game, for the love of God, if they win a playoff game, it goes even higher. Right. If if they were the worst team in the playoffs and lost, it with fourteen teams, it would be what the eighteenth pick. Yeah. 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 Yeah, Eighteen and fourteen. So they would go from eighteen to six. That's like any of these teams. And nobody's talking about it. They're never going to purposely lose. They're not going to miss the opportunity to be in the playoffs. However, it's just funny that the players won't. Exactly. And I don't even think the front office will because the recognition of the playoffs, I don't think that's even on the table. However, it is worth noting that if they lose, the fans can find salvation in the fact that they still get a top 10 pick. We we said we said already it's going to take five wins to win the division. And they're all at three. Again, if one of these teams can steal two games, which it favors the Cowboys the most. The Giants only have to win one. Not the Giants. My apologies. The Eagles only need to win one more because they have the tie. Right, but I just I look at the Cowboys and I think they have too much talent that between Washington, Bengals, Eagles, Giants, and even the banged up 49ers and the Vikings. The Ravens is the only game I say they don't have a chance to win. And with the way the Ravens have been playing, I'm not going to put that down 100%. But if you saw it on the paper right now, you had to pick a winner. Cowboys, Vikings, or Washington, or Cincy, or 49ers, Eagles, Giants. You're at least thinking about it. They got a chance to win that game. In, in a couple, yeah. yeah. So I'm just saying, if, if, the Cowboys, if the Cowboys can steal one of their next five and then beat the Eagles, Giants to end it, and end at six and ten, with how difficult? Oh, they're they, locked in at six and ten for sure. Right. They're one hundred percent. They're locked. So if they can win three of their last seven, the Eagles and Giants, the, their schedules, especially the Eagles, like I said, in any order, it's Saints, Packers, Cardinals, Seahawks. Well, let's let's just let's just go over it real quick. I mean, they they're coming off a loss, all right. Four at, of them at at Cleveland. Who are you taking? Um, who's this now? This is the Eagles. I like the Browns. I do too. Versus Seattle. I like Seattle. I as well. At Green Bay. I like Green Bay. I like Green Bay. I know they speed bagged them last year, but... If the Eagles can potentially get physical at the line of scrimmage, they have a shot. They have a shot. That could be an Um, ups alert. That could be a mass set alert. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, Versus the Saints. Saints. I like the Saints as well. At Arizona. Arizona. I like Arizona as well. They're, at at they're, Dallas. Again, I I think Dallas is going to be on fire. I think Dallas is going to be able to win. I just their their schedule is too favorable. I think it's crazy to say it, but if I had to give you an answer right now, I would say I think the Giants are the best team in the NFC East, and I think the Cowboys are the team that's going to make the playoffs. If I had to right now, looking at their schedules with all of them at three wins. Or no, the Cowboys are only at two. I don't. Maybe we're wasting too much time on a team that's going to get bounced in the first round. Whoever it's just, it. we. To be fair, it's the power rankings, and this is the only division that's never been represented in our power rankings. So yeah. trying to trying to give them some airtime and some real because they're a playoff. One of these teams is a freaking playoff team. Where I mean, for me, number eleven was Indianapolis. For you as well, they might not be. So. At the end of the day, there's a chance that Indianapolis might not be a playoff team. And I think they're too good to not be, but just stating the facts. And, you know, I say some of these games are winnable, but I'm almost forgetting that they got beat 25-3 to by Washington and 23-9 to by Philadelphia. I, yeah. I just think it's crazy. You know, it's just weird how well they played the Steelers with that different quarterback. But, again, we all know Mike Tomlin's Steelers. It's sketchy sometimes how they play on the road. Against yeah. a really bad team, thinking they got the win. I'm glad we bounced back against the Bengals. I told you, we might get upset, but it ain't going to be the Bengals. <laughs> yeah, you, you, the you nailed that game. I'll give you that. I'll give you that. Well, I mean, we uh, we nailed this power ranking. Anything else you want to want to talk about? We do have the NBA draft tonight. Yeah. You know, you guys, we'll be watching, but there's not enough to talk about as of right now. But... Yeah, I know. Um... I know I forget his name. I think it's Anthony Edwards or something like that. Um, yep. It's 
Is that his out name? Out of Georgia? Out of Georgia? Yeah, yeah, out of Georgia. He's kind of the unanimous one at guard. Ah. He, he's he's going to go number one. And if the Warriors are going to use the number two pick, if they're not planning on trading this player, Jameis Wiseman seems to be the unanimous second pick. Yeah. Um, I think they're unanimous because I think they're the best two players coming out. But one's a guard and one's a center. Just based off team. Who has the <coughs> pick again? I, I already forget. The Timberwolves. Yeah. The Timberwolves have Carl Anthony Towns. Um, I think Anthony Edwards would be a great addition to that and squad. And Angelo Russell. Yeah, so they'll have a good backcourt there. Um, I think it's a need, and obviously the Warriors need a center. You add Jameis Wiseman, a young guy, to Clay, Curry, and Draymond. Let's not. Here's what I want to say real quick, and we're just going to get into the NBA a little bit. Try and go back about five years ago, six years ago, and try to remember how much fun you had watching the Warriors before they added Durant. When they were just the Splash Brothers, and they That's were winning a lot of games, and like they were them, yeah. super competitive. I loved watching the Warriors. They added Durant, and it was like super team versus LeBron Cheers. for yeah. like two or three years, or two years. And then Curry and Clay got hurt. When they come back, they're going to remind everyone how good they are. But like, just try to remember how fun the Warriors are to watch. They're not that. I think that's what's making – everyone talks about the NBA ratings have plummeted. I think it's for two reasons. One, the regular season doesn't matter to an extent. Over half the league gets into the playoffs. And two, everyone knew who the finals was going to be for four straight years. It's going to be LeBron versus the Warriors. We'll see if he can take down the super team. You know, he did once. You know, it, it happens. So now it's like the even last year. Sure, the Lakers and LeBron ended up winning, but it was like no one really knew. There was so many trios and duos that every team, you know, we had so many good matchups in the playoffs. The Celtics Heat playoff series, right in the first round, I believe it was, or second, the Jazz Nuggets, Jamal Murray versus Donovan Mitchell. That was amazing. What Luka was able to do to the Clippers all by himself, you know, steal two games, almost stole a third. Um, the Bucks, you know, losing to the Magic one game and then getting bounced by the Heat. There was just so – anybody who watched the NBA playoffs last year was phenomenal. Yeah, And again, this year, you, add, you add some Durant, Kyrie to the mix. And, and I, think you can, I think you can remove OKC in the West just initially. We're not even looking at final rosters. I think you can remove OKC. They've obviously traded away their pieces, Chris Paul and them. And I think you insert the Warriors. I think the Suns, a lot of people are picking them to be a good West team. I think they have – I know they the, just got better. If they play their absolute best, they can be the sixth seed. I agree. I'm not. If I'm they not play upset, lights yeah. out the whole year, they can be the sixth seed and maybe throw a curveball in the first round to a team that if if you struggle to guard guards, but they're not better than the Lakers, Clippers, Jazz, Warriors. the Rockets. If they don't trade people, the Warriors, the Nuggets. Oh, the maybe, Rockets might drop out of the playoffs too if they if they sell. So right. that might be their spot to potentially um, – the Trailblazers think, are still going to be there. I think you have to take Philadelphia a little more seriously now that they have Doc Rivers. Um, I think he's a better coach for yeah. for their for what they've got going on. Yeah, and um, I don't think they're done moving pieces around. Yeah, sometimes I get on a subject and I just get to talking. And that's what the podcast is for, I suppose. Yeah, but. yeah. We'll have to do an NBA podcast soon because yeah, we we got an NBA podcast coming around the corner, guys. Yeah, uh, we'll we'll lock down a date. We'll let uh, free agency starts Friday. Maybe we'll maybe we'll shoot for next Thursday to have just an NBA all out brawl. We'll just talk NBA for an hour and let you guys know what we're thinking. Yeah, um, like Jeff just alluded to, a lot of people overlooked that Monday uh, trades could be agreed to. Today's the draft, and Friday free agency starts. So a lot of these agreed over the weekend, you might see a lot of these guys that got drafted to the Warriors or drafted to the San Antonio Spurs. They might be moving cities before they even see what their locker room looks like. So yeah. um, we, we could we could see a lot of stuff, you know, or how, how Trey Young and Luca got traded the same day as the draft. You know, stuff can happen. Stuff can be agreed to. Um, I believe um, the NBA is super fun for me to watch. If you're a fan of the NBA. Uh, this this podcast is going to be good for you guys because we we love watching NBA basketball and NCAA basketball. Michigan's looking yeah. good there too. 
least on paper. So if they can get a season going, NBA and NCAA basketball will be fun to talk about this year. As long as they can get something in place and get a season going. So, all right, guys, it's been fun. We'll be back next week. Um, talk uh, more power rankings and, and more NBA and gosh, sports are they're full go. Yes, sir. They're full go. Well, take care, guys, and uh, go Patriots. Go Steelers and Man U. You know what it is.